What is up and welcome back everyone to another episode of Well Working on the Forester. As I said, we got lots of work to do before we go on our summer adventures, so that is what we're doing today again. Today we're actually doing something that's definitely not super critical, but it's something that I need to do because it's really, really, really annoying. As some of you Subaru owners have already dealt with, the EVAP system on some of these older cars are a little bit picky, particularly the ones that like to charcoal canister likes to go, the vent doesn't work anymore, or in my case, it won't fill up correctly. I also have a check engine light. It's for the P457 code. It's an emissions code, of course, um, and that would make sense why my fuel tank is not filling up. It literally will take me 15 minutes to fill up a 50 liter tank, I believe. Um, so yeah, it's not fun. But today we're gonna to be fixing that. Today we're gonna to be fixing the check engine code and the filling issue with one thing here. This is a purge valve. This is a purge valve off the charcoal canister in the rear of the car. We're gonna be replacing this because the issue when you're trying to fill up your car is the purge valve actually decides to open or not open depending on if you're filling the car or not. And what happens is it will open or try to open and it actually doesn't open. And then this is where you get the gas splashing back because it's bubbling up and it's not actually venting out of the proper vents, it's trying to vent out of the fill hole. So that's what we're doing today, is we're gonna be replacing one of these on my Subaru Forester. So let's go ahead and get started. So for about an hour of your time and about a hundred bucks you can do this yourself. It's not a hard fix unless you shear the bolt. Thankfully, I sheared the bolt a long time ago when I was deleting my sway bars. So I've already fixed the bolt that's in the frame, but I'll point out to you where you gotta be careful. Anyways, this is a system that's causing us issues. This is the EVAP system on most Subarus. My STI had a very similar one and all of this kind of generation kind of had the same system. So this is what is causing us issues. This box itself isn't, it's the stuff up above it. So that's what we're gonna be tackling today. So we need to be able to drop this down. So with a 14 mil, you'll be able to just drop these two bolts right here in the back. This will drop the rear of the trophy canister. And then once the rear is dropped, then you have to worry about the front. I will show you exactly where I'm talking, but let's go ahead and drop the rear first because there's just two bolts right here, right by this um, hook, and we're able to drop the rear. And with those two rear bolts dropped, now we can focus on the front. One thing to note is if you live in anywhere where it's rusty, those rear bolts are gonna need some penetrating oil. Same with this guy, so make sure you use a lot of that as you're doing this because this is definitely a rusty area of these older cars. And this is a bolt we're gonna be working on today. This is what holds your rear sway bar on, or your bra there's a bracket that holds onto there. As you guys know, I deleted that a long time ago, so I don't have to worry about that. But I, what I did have to worry about when I was doing that is I actually sheared that off. So what you're gonna have is a bracket here. I actually took that bracket off a long time ago, but what happened is I sheared that bolt right off. So what I had to do is I had to go drill and then retap some threads. So we actually do have a nice bolt here, which is easy to remove. As I said, if it's not as rusty, you won't have issues removing this, but if your car is as rusty as mine, maybe use lots of penetrant oil, maybe leave it for a couple days and then try it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this bolt right up front on the struggle canister and then we'll be able to drop the whole canister down. And well, your EVAP system is gonna look somewhat like this. It's gonna be kind of hanging here um, with these done in that front one undone. But we aren't done yet. We actually have to get right in here. You can actually probably see now the valve control that we're trying to get to. It's the one with those hoses back there. So what we're gonna have to do is do undo one more bolt. We're gonna have to undo this guy right here. So this one holds on, as you can see, the, the one we're going after, as well as a little round pod. We're gonna undo this, and then we're gonna kind of wiggle our way out and around past this bracket. Because what we don't wanna do is try to undo that big bolt out of the frame, because that's not coming out. And with that bolt undone, you can actually just go ahead and gently lower this. Make sure you're not creasing the hoses too much, but this is gonna give us a good look at the emission system on our Subaru. So, as I said, the round thing, we're not gonna to touch. This is another solenoid system I don't think we need. It's this guy that we're more worried about. This little rusty valve right here, this is what we're gonna be changing. So, the next thing we're gonna to have to tackle is getting these hoses off, but You'll be able to find it because it will look exactly like your same one and it'll have a little plug, little pigtail with two cables coming out right here. So I'm gonna get this off and then show you how I got those hoses off because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do right now. And well, that was easier than I was expecting. The hoses came off just with some pliers, super easy. And then actually the plug was the hardest thing. You just have to kind of wiggle it out here and there. So we're ready to throw this away and install this. But while we're down there, we're gonna do one other thing that might also help with the filling and unfilling. 
and it's these two hoses. So the front two connections, not the upper one, the lower and the like little tiny one, we wanted to check because well, it's raining charcoal. Um, so those also kind of, if your canister's a little wonky or is jamming, it could be also because there is a bunch of charcoal in the hoses. So what I did is I just went ahead and I grabbed um, some pliers and pulled these off. As you can see, the hose clamps are still on it. These hose clamps weren't very tight, so I'm going to go ahead and replace them because they kind of are rusting apart. And yeah, they're not very tight. So I'm gonna go ahead um, and take some new hose clamps, put these on, as you can tell, no more no more charcoals rut, running out of them. Oh, maybe that went a little bit more. So I will um, drain these full of charcoal, go ahead, new hose clamps, attach these, and then we can go ahead, put our new purge valve in, and then button this all back up to the top of the car and see if that fixed it. And well, there we go. We have our two new hose clamps on those hoses that we emptied the charcoal from. We go around here, we have our new purge valve that is behind here and it's all bolted up, it's all connected and is reconnected to the hoses as well. So what this means is now we can take this whole system and put it back to where it belongs. And just like that we have everything buttoned up. So we got our new clamps, it bolted onto the frame there and it's bolted onto the two mounts there and it's all stuck in there so we are done. And there we go, with the purge valve change and the line cleaned out, there's nothing stopping the air from the tank getting to the vent. So hopefully with that, you should be able to fill up freely and not have any issues with the check engine light. So until next episode where obviously we're gonna be working on the Forester again, peace out and stay humble.